Clintonville, Wisconsin is on edge over something that's going bump in the night. Around 3 a.m., I really heard just some loud noises like sonic booms. Police and other emergency crews have been on the prowl trying to hunt down what's causing all the racket, but so far, no luck. It all started Sunday and Monday nights, and police got flooded with dozens of calls when they hit. City officials say they've exhausted all the reasonable explanations, including construction work, and they've checked methane levels, too. They've even called in a seismologist who couldn't explain the matter. Well, I think we can rule out that really sort of um, standard earthquake activity, some swarm of earthquakes, is not happening in that region. It also really looks like it's not connected to, uh, say, unusual drilling activity uh, or, um, or some other kind of real obvious human-induced signal. Officials are now inviting residents to a special city meeting to try to get to the bottom of it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, March 21st, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and YouTube is ddarko. 2012 and DDARCO 2013. So I wanted to include um, that siren in there, and it really stinks because, you know, that thing was going for uh, probably about four minutes. I mean, you know, I was kind of just, I heard it, and then I'm like, okay, well, yesterday they had a siren, just a normal siren, and uh, they usually do that about halfway through the month. But then they had it again the next day, and it was, wasn't like, you know, around noon when they normally do it. It was in the morning, and uh, it didn't – it sounded a lot more weird than what I showed in those 40 seconds because I only got the tail end of it where you heard, you know, just kind of those weird sounds and then it kind of tailing off like an air raid. But there was a lot more before that, and hopefully I can catch another one. Uh, so two things I'd like to say before I start here, and that is first – I'm not in fear of any disaster. I'm actually looking forward to it because I think it's going to be, you know, an opportunity for this minority of us free thinkers to actually become free. Uh, because as long as everybody else believes in a piece of paper, then we're we're kind of bound to that. Because if, you know, we're kind of like them, right? So we're going to get hauled in while this happens, you know. And I guess the best goal is to try to stay away from all that, the little um, uh, kind of, you know, hurting basically of the of the masses during this national crisis so f for those that want to be individuals this would be a good opportunity so it's not so much that uh that i'm saying oh it's, there's a big you know there's big something coming it's just that you know just it's kind of giving a timeline of little things that are happening along the way that you should just at least pay attention to so that if you do have your little survival bag or your backpack or something like that and you have somewhat of a plan you can kind of gauge it, you know what I mean? If you haven't got your family uh, uh, talk to them about a plan or something like that, maybe you can try again with them. Be like, you know, what are you guys going to do, you know, if the electricity goes out or something? How are we going to meet up, you know? It may just be another thing, incentive to get together with your family or friends and try to uh, hash that out. So this first article I have up is uh, Pentagon's Iran buildup calling for adding laser weapons. I've covered this um, actually kind of a lot recently tying them into uh, blurbs in the news about it the u.s central command plans to bolster military capabilities against iran right that's just what they're telling us by fielding new laser target new laser target trackers for machine guns enhance sensors for underwater vehicles improve protection against drone attacks so i mean they're the ones that are carrying out all the drone attacks so <laughs> Who are they going to defend against themselves? It says that Tampa, Florida based command, which is responsible for U.S. forces in the Persian Gulf region, also want to ship $5.5 million in previously approved funds to buy Gatlin guns for 
uh, Navy Coastal Patrol craft, according to budget documents, and it goes on and says they threatened to uh, Iran has threatened to uh, close the Strait of Hormuz, which all this oil comes in and it's supposed to tell people, oh my God, what do I do? What are we going to do? Oh well, the U.S. Navy would move to stop any Iranian attempt to lay mines in the Strait of Gulf. Oh, whew. well, thank God for that military-industrial complex and my tax dollars going towards it, because I don't know what we'd do as an act. <laughs> you know, <laughs> meanwhile the gas prices are like four dollars and ten cents, and it has nothing to do with Iran or any of this, right? So if Iran did do that, Vice Admiral Mark Fox says. Uh, that would be an act of war. So before we get to the lasers, it goes on the article is trying to sell how they need to uh, steal more money from taxpayers to fund these weapons. And it goes, oh, see, um, in a couple cases, Iran proved capabilities faster than we anticipated, right? So just like the nuclear threat, it's faster than we knew. Uh, you know, they said that eight years ago. You know, uh, the next year, the next two years, it's going to be faster. And um, and he goes in there and he says, oh, Iran's drones has an active program, uh, lethal drones. And that's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, I found this article a couple of days ago on the 17th. Iran claims to have domestically produced drone. Now, this is the same drone that was shot down or it wasn't even shot down. It was brought down, landed, um, and basically given to them in a nice little red ribbon to the uh, Iranians. And, uh, and then, of course, what you saw after that was when it first came down was that the U.S., oh, they're coming up with a brand new drone. So... You know, and I've heard, uh, what is it, uh, just recently about Ahmadinejad being a Kabbalist agent, you know, so that's probably how it is in every single country, and it's just, they just do this so they can create their nice big uh, money-making machine. So it goes in there, talks about small, fast patrol vessels, kamikaze boats, I've even heard that, as described by BAE Systems, a nice small mom-and-pop uh, uh, shop, subcontractor, Boeing company, the tactical laser systems bring high precision accuracy against surface and air targets, such as small boats and unmanned aerial uh, systems. So the, here's all the links, I've covered them before, uh, you know, they came from a listener, so... The, the ones that sent me the links originally on these directed energy weapons, I wouldn't have really been have known about it if it wasn't for that. So I appreciate it. And you know, these people have all the links right here. You can go check them out. They have their own little um, uh, their own little headquarters and, and now just set up. Uh, but the, what I was going to say too, these mysterious booms rattle Wisconsin City. Uh, if you look in here, it goes on and it says uh, the Project Pandora conducted by the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research included externally induced auditory uh, input from pulse microwave audiograms of words or sounds which create the effects of hearing voices or noises that are not part of the recipient's own thought processes. Although in very quiet environment, the test subject would clearly hear the words or sounds whether or not the person was hearing ear protection uh, such as earplugs. Okay, so this was interesting that I found uh, Congress approved $28 million shift to provide U-2 spy planes with upgraded satellite links that increase their capability to provide real-time high bandwidth video feeds to ships, ground forces, and command and control centers, according to the reprogramming documents. So this is part of the recent defense budget. Remember, we're on a cover about uh, how they're going to use less uh, regular troops and more uh, drones and more uh, special forces. Uh, one of the things that they said was that they were going to stay with this uh, U-2 spy plane instead of more uh, radical designs. Look at funds were shifted from the Pentagon Biological and Chemical Weapons Defense Program and Navy Air Force Shipbuilding Satellite and Aircraft Programs deemed to have excess funds or experiencing delays. So that'll give you a little uh, hint as to where they're going with this. And it's this. Global Intelligence and Information Grid goes online and it says here the framework aims for streamlined intelligence sharing. So there's all your uh, subsurface surface stuff going on there. Um, but also what? There's your U-2 spy plane and your Predator drones. BAE, BAE systems to supply B-2 threat warning system upgrade. Vision 2015 globally networked and integrated intelligence enterprise. It says here Boeing demonstrates near space networking technology. If you're a new listener, uh, links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so go check it out. I'll just read this editor's note and move on. This is something that the uh, author has been following for half a decade, integrating intelligence agencies, geospatial intelligence, jets, drones, and more uh, down to boots on the ground in one system, special forces, right? A few years ago, the head of the DNI mentioned that there was plans to integrate all of the world's intelligence agencies, and DI2E is a continuation of that. We will. All right, so I'm going to finish up with 
put some big brother news. Uh, lawsuit mobile applications accessing users' address books says a class action lawsuit filed this week in Austin alleges the makers of some of the world's most popular apps routinely steal address book data such as names, phone numbers, email addresses, job titles, and even birthdays from millions of users without their knowledge or consent. Connecticut is like... It's like uh, you're gonna get hauled off, abducted, you know, pre-dawn, and uh, it's like, well, you know, I didn't consent to that. I didn't consent to it. <laughs> Connecticut advances RFID license plate legislation. Connecticut's uh, Senate Transportation Committee backs bill to explore implanting electronic tracking chips on license plates. And I'm sure they're already doing that, you know, with these real thin plates you'll see in some states. They look like, you know, pretty damn thin. I would be uh, surprised if there wasn't RFID tracking chips uh, like your licenses and passports. I'm sorry, your national ID, which is probably really an international ID. Uh, it says here, U.S. government admits it has seized hundreds of domains registered outside the United States. And it says here that such seizures are becoming more commonplace under the Obama regime. It says the government has seized approximately 750 domains this way. Using mobile phone user location data for crowd soft control. I've actually covered this as well in a video where the police were actually admitting that they were using the, the Occupy protesters' own phones to track them and Facebook. 88% uh, of Americans now own a cell phone forming a massive network that offers scientists a wealth of information and infinite number of new applications with the help of the phones, these devices, cameras, recorders, uh, other features, researchers envision endless possibilities for gathering huge amounts of data. Uh, basically to monitor noise pollution, air quality, to applications that build maps from people's cell phone snapshots. Like Facebook, it's not something that you're being forced to carry with you all the time. You have the choice. As as Occupy arrestees arraign, iris scans affect bail. Yeah, it's uh, pretty crazy here. If they don't take their iris scanned, uh, they're not going to get bail. The protesters' legal advisors were surprised yesterday to learn that the size of their bail was being affected by whether defendants were willing to have the distinctive patterns of their irises photographed and logged into a database. Next up, we have 90% of taser death victims were unarmed saying that more than 500 Americans have been killed by tasers since their use began to take off in 2001, which is almost one per week. So here you go, guys. Hear the siren? Just while I'm recording. That's not a normal siren. I don't know. But I'm going to keep moving here. NYPD marks Occupy Wall Street anniversary with violent crackdown and arrest. So it said the peaceful rally had gathered almost 600 people and police uh, stormed Zuccotti Park. It goes on and says police are now seeking a subpoena against an activist sympathizer who tweeted a death threat to New York police on... That's crazy. It was probably the actual cops that did that that made the threat. <laughs> Twitter users reported broken jaws and thumbs and one man who had his head smashed into a window by police. Occupy Wall Street activist uh, says here Cecily McMillian, sorry if I don't pronounce that right, McMillian, allegedly beaten by NYPD. She suffered a seizure Saturday night during the protest. Five freedom killing tactics police will use to crack down on protests in 2012. Said police forces are adding new ways to crack down on protesters. Go check it out. Then we have this out of hobby class drones lifting off for personnel and commercial use. Talks about a nice personal story about Jordy Munoz who had no training, scant schooling, little money, but he did have a video game console and nothing else to do. So he built his own drone. Five years later, he's the CEO of 3D Robotics. So yeah, we know about this. Uh, they're going to integrate the U.S. government integrate drones into American airspace by 2015, like 30. 30,000 or something like that. But look at that. Experts predict drones will be used in transport air cargo assist with search and rescue, right? But we're really here. Perform police surveillance. How the FBI monitored uh, anarchist hangouts, organic farmers uh, market under the guise of combating terrorists. It was called Seizing Thunder. And it says into animal rights and environmental terrorists in the Pacific Northwest. And it was seemingly pointless surveillance of activists. Well, it wasn't pointless. That was the goal to crack down on people trying to sell raw milk and whatnot. Congratulations, New Yorkers. You'll be the first state that will require DNA samples to be collected from anyone convicted of a felony or penal law misdemeanor and placed into a DNA data.
bank. The Californians have Prop 69, which uh, requires warrantless collection of DNA from any person arrested of a felony. Every state participates in CODIS, and CODIS is a DNA database maintained by the federal government. The NSA is building the country's biggest spy center. Watch what you say. According to CIA, spies could use your TV to snoop on you with not just the internet, but even radio waves from outside your home. Uh, everything from remote controls to clock radios can now be controlled. So job seekers are getting asked for Facebook passwords and man ordered to apologize to wife daily on Facebook. And some caution, American ISPs to launch massive copyright spying scheme on July 12th. Thank you.